Hey everyone, welcome to the program, WRSA Radio. I am your host, Grenadier One, or G1 if you prefer. Uh, as always, I hope you are having a good week. It has been a good one for me uh, as we get ready for the holidays coming up. I had a fun day yesterday getting in an interview that will be the show next week. It was fantastic, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I will I will conceal the details uh, of the actual show until next week and keep the the subject of the interview a mystery for you guys. But it was good, and he is a, a very interesting person. I look forward to, to putting that up uh, for you all next week. Now, due to the holidays, I will be posting that show on Wednesday, uh, likely well, really early Wednesday morning, like midnight or uh, maybe 1 a.m. I'm a, I'm a late, late, uh, late person, so uh, probably be really late in the evening or, or very, very early morning Wednesday. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get to, to this week's show. We had some interesting items come to light this week regarding, well, how the elite hold us in contempt. Just blatant disregard for who we are, what we are, and what our position in the world is, what our relationship with the elite are. What I mean is that they hate us. They they regard us as cows to be milked. They believe that we are all stupid and vile and vulgar and not worth their respect. Uh, we, we serve them. We are the beast of burden and that pull their wagon. And make no mistake, they hate us. But they know that they cannot survive without us. So they've lied to us. They, they have to trick us and manipulate us to keep us from turning on them. But a couple of things this week showed us that, well, the mask is coming off and the real face is showing. And really, that's something that's been happening you know, more and more, and it's indicative of a larger problem, that being that the, the wheels are coming off of the wagon. Uh, to, to continue the analogy. And what we are seeing is that while the wheels are coming off, the, the driver is more concerned with beating us with the whip than stopping and trying to actually fix the problem. And I want you to see this juxtaposition of what is going on here with these things. Uh, we, we begin with, well, as a speech by the governor of New York, whereby she announces that with all of the recent events in the Middle East, that the episodes of online hate are increasing in magnitude and frequency to the point that she has directed the law enforcement agencies of New York, these terrorist task force, to step up the surveillance of online platforms and individuals using social media. And that is to say that she is having the agents of government police the speech of Americans. Now, there was no indication of what would happen if these law enforcement agents discovered something that, you know, ran afoul of whatever protocol they have in place to, you know, identify a, an alert or a, an emergency or a problem, whatever they have out there. And that, that's kind of part of the problem is we don't know what exactly will trigger their response. You know, one has to imagine that it will lead to law enforcement showing up at the homes of people to, you know, demand that they explain what they mean when they called Booty Enforcer 464 a turbo cancer that needed to be taken out. You know, not recognizing that they were just playing Call of Duty and Booty Enforcer was camping on the spawn. Now, I doubt that it would be that trivial, of course. I, I will give them some credit, but, but only a little. See, we, we already know that that kind of you know, gamer language might really only get a teenager in trouble if they were in a high school or some you know, overactive Karen mom thought they were planning something. But we have, however, seen very similar, obvious, comical language posted on other platforms that leads to the arrest and prosecution of people who, well, they happen to follow a specific uh, political ideology, one that runs afoul of those in power. And these laws that govern 
what are deemed to be threatening speech are only ever used to target people who the government deems to be a threat to them. They don't care about you and me. They don't care about stopping someone who might, for example, commit a mass casualty-causing event. We've seen that time and time again. It's very, very frequent over the last few years, unfortunately. Individuals who've been identified as being the, the perpetrators of these mass casualty attacks have been, you know, on the radar of the FBI or some other law enforcement agency, and they don't get taken out in any any version of that word. They're allowed to continue to operate freely with no overwatch while perfectly innocent people who are only engaging in political conduct that happens to run afoul of the uniparty doctrine are persecuted to the fullest extent of the law. No tax dollars are spared to put little old ladies who happen to just walk into a building during a protest in jail. Now, the government of New York wants to increase surveillance and harassment of people who are in disagreement with the current events in Israel, for example. People that will be called a threat to democracy, whatever that means, the sacred democracy. I'm sure that the FBI fusion centers are working overtime to crank out a list of targets for further action. Now, lucky for us, we have a measure of online anonymity. And I say a measure of it because we all know that it is a thin veil of secrecy that keeps our identities concealed. At any time, most online platforms will reveal to law enforcement the real names of those who are posting online, if they have them, uh, at, at a minimum, they'll reveal, you know, IP information that will allow law enforcement to track down who you are, or at least get closer to who you are. Online anonymity is really only protective of the average doxer who wants to, you know, churn up a cancel campaign against you if you say something negative about their cause of choice. We still have that level of protection for now, but at least you think that all this stuff I say about a uniparty is BS. In the latest Republican presidential debate, we had the one and only Nikki Haley herself calling for an end to online anonymity. She professes that Online anonymity is a threat to national security, and that it has to be ended. She's going to press for that if she's elected president. You know, we should be required to show a proof of who we are to sign up for online services and platforms so that we can be identified. Now, I want you to run a couple of your brain nuggets together to wrap around this. Nikki Haley says that people having fake names on the internet is a threat to national security. Booty Enforcer 464 is a threat to national security, but Nikki Haley is not. Now, you all know that her name is really not Nikki Haley, right? So the woman with a fake name says that Those of us who have fake names on the internet are a threat to national security. Well, Miss Nimrata, I think having a fake name and running for president is a threat to national security. Perhaps you should have the decency to shut the hell up and sit down. Anonymity is a foundation of free speech, of course. It is woven into the birth of our country. Now, we may have gotten some things wrong during that birth. We may have assumed that things would remain as they were for a very long time into the future, and that how the country was founded and established would work for all that time. Well, we were wrong about that. We have allowed our country to be transformed into something that the founders would not only not recognize, but they would immediately begin organizing a new revolution against. And I've spoken long and 
tiringly about how our country has been consumed from the inside by an insidious enemy that hollows out our institutions. It has systematically taken control of the levers of government and the agencies and directed them inwardly at the body of our citizens. And we reached a point, indeed, where those agencies are even devouring themselves. This week, we also see whistleblowers from within the FBI itself detailing that the FBI has turned its gaze on its own agents and began to purge those that are deemed to be what they call too patriotic. Former members of the military are being watched at the FBI, and if they are found to not be towing the party line enthusiastically enough, they're being hounded until they quit the FBI or found to have violated some rule or procedure and fired. And if this is going on in the FBI, then there's no doubt that it is going on in other agencies as well, or it will be in a matter of time. And it's only a matter of time before we learn of all that from whistleblowers. No one is safe. No one is free from the regime and its minions. And this is obviously being done to ensure that there is utmost loyalty among the agents who are at the fore of enforcing the Biden administration's edicts and proclamations. I say proclamations because this administration has completely abandoned the process of law and rule of law. Last week, Biden announced by executive order that he was issuing rules and demands for the regulation of AI systems, that AI systems would be required to follow all of these rules and requirements. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. President, but that's not how things work with executive orders. You don't get to regulate private industry with those administrative directives. That's not how it works. Private industry that interacts with government, sure, you can put requirements out there. Hey, I need you to do this. I need you to do that if you want a government contract. And companies will will bend the knee to that if because they want that money. But just your average company that's out there doing day-to-day -day business, you can say what you want, but they don't have to follow that rule. They're at least going to challenge you in court with it. We saw the FCC this week vote to adopt a new diversity scheme that the Biden administration has concocted. Now, I mentioned this one even though I don't really have much detail on it and have, haven't really dug into what the proposal says or the, the, the scheme says. And I only wanted to highlight it in case you had not heard it because I have no doubt that this is in line with the same kind of spirit that the gover governor of New York and Nikki Haley have put out there, they, that being the assault on the internet. The, the few hints that I got from the announcement about this, this vote indicate to me that, you know, we're not going to be happy about this one. I just don't know enough yet to get deep into it. So, so that one I just put out there for you to take on your own and kind of run with it. But like I said, folks, they hate us, and they're not stopping to build more and more fences and barriers to our lives. Meanwhile, the world is falling apart around us, and we are on the brink of annihilation. Now, about that annihilation, take, take an opportunity to go watch the latest videos from Colonel McGregor. Uh, he, he lays out some possible scenarios that are well, kind of rather jarring and alarming. Now, he may not always be right, and I see some people give him flack for that, but he's the only pundit out there who is far enough along the path to be speaking anything like what is reality in the West. So give him a watch. Uh, Concerned American always links to videos over on the Mothership, the WRSA page. Go over there, click those links, and go watch those videos because it's extremely informative and like I said, it's, it's a view of things that you're just not going to get from, from other media in the West. Now, that is about all I have this week. It's a shorter show. Like I said, I spent more time this week focusing on getting the interview for next week ready. Uh, but I do want to take a few minutes to say something um, about the program in general. Next week is the third anniversary of the show. I, I started 
the week of Thanksgiving in 2020 with the very first episode. And I had no idea what this would lead to and how long I could keep this going. It's uh, It has been a fun ride, and I look forward to more years in the future with this channel. Uh, hopefully we can continue to slowly grow and expand our subscribers and our audience. Now, I have no illusions about how good or bad this show is. I think I do a pretty good job, and I appreciate all of you watching and listening. But I recognize that it's not for everyone, and that a lot of people disagree with me or don't like the content from time to time. And there are even some people who are regulars over at the website who just hate the show and me and everything I talk about. And that's, you know, that's fine. I wish them well in the the up and coming and in the future, but I don't care about their opinions. <laughs> you know, sometimes you may see them comment on the videos and sometimes I might respond to that. Mostly I'm not going to respond to that. Uh, that that has been the most impactful growth from the show for me as someone who creates things. It's hard sometimes to detach yourself from your work and accept that there are people out there who are critical to be helpful, which I I really like and and I welcome. And then there are people who are critical just because they're haters. You know, they they just don't like anything. And this show has allowed me to create something on a weekly basis that I put myself into. But I can also stand back and, and be detached enough from it that I remain objective about it. So I welcome positive feedback. I welcome negative feedback that is constructive. But I don't really care about the haters. I appreciate every one of you and your viewership and your loyalty you are why I do the show, and I thank you immensely for being a continued listener. And that is all I have time for this week. Uh, like and subscribe. Come see us over on Gab and the Mothership, and I will see you on the next episode.